Hey guys, what's up? So, ever since I've had this truck, it's always had a really bad parasitic draw. And I thought I'd try to figure it out. I'll show you what I got here. So, got that over on uh, Amazon. And it's a some multimeter leads, but it has like a fuse connector on it. And I wanted to see what device is sucking up all this power in my system. Um, yeah, because I have no clue what's going on. My batteries will go dead after a couple days or a week, depending how charged they are. And uh, and the worst thing for your battery is to, uh, you know, if it starts decharging, you're going to build up sulfation on your battery. So that's actually one of the reasons why in there video I did the flip uh, automatic flow charger. That's permanently installed, but uh, I want to actually I want to actually solve the problem for real and figure out what the deal is. So I, actually, I put a fuse in here. And we'll go through. I'm going to test the circuit, but first I'm going to deactivate the uh, the circuit. I'm going to put the car to sleep, and I'll show you how to do that real fast. All right, this is the driver's side door. I'm going to be using this side because the fuel fuse panel's right there. We'll get that going under here. But I got to first make sure this car is asleep. So I got to wait about half an hour and make sure all the security things are going off. But I need to first uh, emulate that the door is locked. I gotta keep the door open though, so I come back about a half an hour and I start testing these fuses. I'm gonna take my test light and I'm gonna see which ones are active because I mean a lot of these, these fuses are key switched. So I'm gonna figure out which ones are active and I'm gonna test those individual ones and see what kind of draw they're doing. So yeah, you know, through the multimeter, I'll be able to see on the multimeter. So you'll see. All right. okay, let me demonstrate how this thing works. So I currently have my uh, 12 volt uh, power supply connected to the one side of the test fuse and then I have on the negative side I have a LED and I can demonstrate the actual draw like what I'm going to see on the multimeter here so there we go got some power going through it so the, the power is actually going through the multimeter so I'm getting about one milliamp and it's about the same on this so I can verify that it actually is working so, same concept. So once I actually get this connected to my fuse panel, I'm going to be able to see on this screen what it's actually pulling here. Sorry, come. And so I'm currently waiting for the uh, car to go to sleep, and I'm also printing out a uh, fuse puller because they're kind of a nightmare to get out of. Let me show you that real fast. And I guess you can't really see it there, but if you're a hobbyist, man, you definitely need to get a 3D printer. The things are incredible. So, um, yeah, I need to put some more hairspray on that thing to get it to stick but um, all right so I'm gonna wait for this to get printed out and uh, the car to go to sleep and we'll take a look all right so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna figure out which one of these things are hot I have this thing grounded out obviously and I'm gonna make a mark on my little diagram here so I know which ones to come back and test okay so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna make a mark I'm gonna grab my little sharpie and I know that this top one up here is hot Hot, so I'm gonna make a mark on this one right here. I'll make a mark on the actual number. Where it, I'm gonna make a mark so I know which fuses to go back and test with my, with my multimeter. Ones that are actually hot, because if it's not hot, then it's not gonna be sending current. It's not gonna be uh, creating a parasitic draw. So, all right. All right, so I have my 3D printed uh, fuse puller here and my multimeter with my fuse connector. And now that I've marked all the spots are actually hot and one thing I've noticed is that this side of the panel right here this side seems like it's key switched uh, power and this is constant power on this side so yeah, if you look at all the dots this way going forward seems like it's all hot all right so far so so far I haven't really found anything that's really anything that's 0 0.017 which is basically nothing but uh, I'm gonna mark it though so that's how I have it plugged in like that. Yeah, this tool is cool, but I can't fit into certain areas like this. It's creating a, a blockage right there. You know, so uh, it's sort of an issue. I had to remove a, a relay here. But, so I might just have to grab my multimeter probes and get something in there. All right, take a look at this one. This is the instrument cluster, which I thought. This is a two right there. And take a look. I 
I can hear it actually going, making noise. I'm just trying to get it hold hold it in there, but that's pulling about a half an amp. But it's like I said, it's really hard to get in there. I can hear the I can hear the things making noise when I get back in there. That's the only thing that's really obvious so far. Okay, take a look at this one. So this thing actually draws. My little USB power connector draws about 0.23. So right now I have it connected to the power point, and I'm going to plug it in like that. Now observe the multimeter. So power that little LED on this device it's on there draws about 0.200, like less than I'm going to map. All right, cool. So that's actually probably what I got before, maybe. All right, so I went through the engine compartment here. And uh, this is what I have so far. Nothing else even registered, so I only put stuff on that actually registered. Um, so I'm gonna go through. I think I'm gonna test the uh, go to the engine compartment and see if I can find anything on these fuses. But uh, I don't know if I can test these fuses right here or what these for. I guess I'll look and see what they are. Like the zero eight seven here. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing for the engine compartment. I'm gonna first find the hot, and then I'm gonna run my tester on it. So that's hot, that one's not hot. All right. Oop. Yeah. So nothing, pretty much. So I'm gonna go through all these and do the same thing. Look for something going crazy here. So after a couple hours of troubleshooting this thing, I've kind of narrowed down. So this is actually the uh, what it should be at right here, at about 35 milliamps. Uh, I had actually unplugged the instrument cluster, and that's creating a serious parasitic draw. I'll show you that real quick. Let me go back and I'll put the fuse back in. All right. So. Two problems here. So this instrument cluster actually uses two fuses here. So fuse two and fuse 41. So when I plug either of those fuses in, it's gonna bring up that uh, draw. So let me show you real quick. I'll put in fuse two. If you can see that, I'm trying to keep the, you hear this thing shaking around and moving around as power. So let me go back and I'll show you the uh, draw now. Yeah, I've done this test quite a few times already, so so now we're up to about 500 milliamps. And that's going to basically drain and kill the battery. So definitely narrowed it down. And But I was trying to find the schematic online for the instrument cluster because I might take this apart and try to fix it. Because inside there, there's a thing called a power saving relay or power saver relay. And it's supposed to put this thing in a sleep mode. Because the sensor my cluster also controls the radio and the power windows and a few other things. But um, so now I can either buy a new instrument cluster or take this thing apart and try to fix it. And uh, like I said, I have to take this whole dash apart to get the thing out. And it's kind of a headache to do, but it's about $300 to buy a new one. So. All right, guys. Cool. Figure it out. So at least I narrowed it down to what it is. But I definitely like, would like to fix this myself and not pay somebody to do it. So, all right, I'm gonna pull that fuse out again just so I don't have to drain my batteries. So I can figure it out. Even though I actually do have a float charger. But all right, guys. Cool. Narrowed it down.